500 pieces of jewelry showed up. I don't know where to start. Oh, oh f me. All 50th anniversary. Bro. We're drag racing now? Let's go. Are you what the f are we doing, bro? This particular economy is running on fumes, it's running on bullshit capital companies. I personally feel like this country has been infiltrated by China. Hey guys, before you go on, don't forget to hit the like, comment, subscribe button, all those good things that help our channel grow. And now back to the video. We're on our way to Manhattan to do a trade with a customer of mine who's been waiting for this watch to come in that came from our Hong Kong office. Paddock 5726A, discontinued with the white dial. Excited to meet him and uh, do a few trades. <laughs> Back in New York, Big Apple, big business. Uh, it's 12 o'clock. I do want to look at some of the watches he has too, real quick. How would Paul Thorpe say it? A few bits and pieces. A few bits and pieces. Nah, mate, he may say more like this. All right, so we always go to New York when we have a few things to do, so it doesn't become a waste of a trip. This time around, the first order of business was to buy. I told you guys numerous times, it's a buyer's market. So what do we do when it's a buyer's market? We go to buy. Everything has a price. RM003 in platinum. Another unicorn, courtesy of Mr. Roman Buys. How about the Jorn though? I mean, come on. Take the RM all day. All day. I don't know. They're about the same price. All day and tomorrow. Yeah, we took a huge delivery on a big package with a couple of very badass Vash rounds, Richard Meal, FP Jorn and things of that nature. And oftentimes I'll buy pieces from dealers and they'll just leave it in New York for me at our friend's office. Adrian, yes. who says we don't buy Nautiluses? 5980. We buy. Doing? We buy, we buy. We buy, we buy. Go give me the, give me the nose. These are my favorite. This right here is my watch. I've been in love with this watch for a long time. It's, when I first started in the business, this thing came out, the skeleton bash. I mean, come on now. That's a, that's a work of art. This is a this is a Marco. This is Holy shit watch. This is probably the most undervalued Richard in the collection period. Arm this is the most undervalued Vacheron. Looks like a it's like a 5970. No, but this has a hunter case as well. We had a client that we were meeting to bring us a watch that we bought remotely. This time we were doing a bunch of trades and we were looking to close a pretty big deal as well. Upwards of three and a half million dollars and it's just better to do that in person. Roman, I say we head over there right now. It's 12.55, we gotta go. How are Good you? you? Good to see you, have a seat. All good? So let me see the watch. Yeah, sure. The one gentleman that was supposed to meet us at 47th Street, we showed up 15 minutes early. He came up to Nobu to give us the Royal Oak. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. And the invoice. So the warranty card is inside. Here yeah, we got a yellow gold 25860 BA reference. The gold around the sub dials here. Nice little touch. 70,000. Can you wire that 70,000, please, that Adrian asked? So we kicked off a couple of months ago. Mm -hmm. So I've been a private collector for four years now. Okay. And me and some friends from the Netherlands had decided to set up shop here in New York. Okay. So we started that a couple of months ago to actually formalize it, put up an LLC, got an office here in Madison. Tough so time to get into this business. Listen, no, whenever the, right, the right, bell rings, the, the, right the highest moment, that's when I buy a house. <laughs> no, it's okay. It's okay. We we were expecting a downfall to happen in the if next you have fund, year. If you have funding behind you, you'll do fine on a buying end. We'll do fine. We'll yeah. do fine. We're gonna, we're gonna manage. And then 15 minutes later, our next client showed up with whom we had lunch. First time seeing this watch in person, actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was between this and the 5990 white. And you expect to be a heavier watch, but because the stainless steel is so light. Oh, you, you know, you know the, the light, the pin system and the links in the 57 and the Nautiluses are very light. Right, like Royal Oaks are much heavier than stainless steel models. I think the white dials are the most underrated. I, no, to me, it's my favorite. We did a three for one trade. 5726 white dial uh, for a 15500 ST white AP, a Code 1159 rose gold with the ceramic size, as well as a Paddock 5905 chocolate dial. Here we are meeting a client of ours that flew in from Florida to come meet us in New York. He was trading in his three watches, a 5905 in rose gold, a Code 1159 rose gold with ceramic size as well as a 15500 ST white. So he actually made some profit on some of the watches in trade for the watch that I was selling him, a 5726 white dial discontinued. It was three for one deal. Did like a C-section. C-section. <laughs> <laughs> What is 
<laughs> that is the new LB logo provided by Christian. Shout out to our guys. I made that. I made that. I made that. How long did it take you to make it? Uh, to get to this, a while. Yeah, a couple weeks. This, this is the one. This is it. I actually, I made this logo. Before you came, I just never showed it to you. Yeah. I didn't the camera, think you would the like cameras it. The cameras were off. Yeah, the cameras were off. Oh, I'll get it here in two hours. <laughs> Yo. Alright, cool. You're the coolest kid I ever met in my life. Today I have one of my good friends, Jack from Mainline Souls. He is bringing in his Explorer to trade it in for a Datejust two-tone Wimbledon. Sorry, we're doing like renovation crazy renovation. How long have you had that test for? Like a year. Really? Alrighty. There it is. This might not be sized to me, but... Uh, probably not, but... What year is this, by the way? I didn't ask you any questions. So, it's watch only? Yeah. Do you guys have, like, polishers? Yeah, I mean, if you want, we can get it touched up. No. You know, it just takes, like, a few, uh, no, this a few looks days, fine. but... I might need to get it polished. Yeah, you, you definitely wore this thing. At least you enjoyed it, though. Daily beater. Daily beater. That's, That's my favorite watch. Yeah, I take care of that. <laughs> Yeah. Does it think? really fit perfect? I don't know how you like to wear your watches. Perfect. There you go. I wouldn't change yeah. it. See, bro, I know your size already. Exactly. Crazy. Mr. Sharp. This kid I met, he was 13. He's been hustling since he was 13 years old. The OG right here. Well, what can I say about Jack? So, uh, Marcus was 15. He asked me to take him and a buddy of his to a sneaker convention. He wasn't driving, so obviously I loaded up my car and I took him there. I said, hey, we're going to pick up our buddy Jack on the way. Jack shows up, after about an hour at the show and him pulling out a stack of cash this big and going to spend like $10,000 in a matter of 15 minutes at the trade show, I realized Jack was only 13 years old. He's also the kid that bought himself a G-Wagon at the age of 15 before he even had his license. Hmm. Definitely an interesting character, but definitely a hustler in heart. And he always treats himself and Rolex is his go-to. We're drag racing now? What? Let's go. You, you know a strip outside? You really want to- Let's you, do it. I don't know, it's, he wants to race now. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm literally so confused at what's going on right now. <laughs> what the f what? What the f are we doing, bro? You don't know any drag spots around here? No. We're in f***ing Southampton. Bro, we're in Southampton. What do you mean, let? <laughs> Three, two, one. I have no clue what just happened or what went down. He just told me to get in and drive, so. Uh, thanks, Jack, and congrats on your new stage host. What is on your shorts, bro? What is all that I smell some As usual. Adrian, so far, if you do the math, with what we bought in our first stop, with what we picked up, with what we did here, we had a damn near a million in business, right? That's only scratching the surface about what we're about to do. If we get this deal done, just fly straight to Miami with me tomorrow. My, oh. Mm. Here comes our Uber. My man decided to fuck it, I'm gonna turn around. Oh. Yep, don't kill nobody. About to go see our buddy Roman. The great king, name, the great king name. of exclusive timepieces. <laughs> he is, in, indeed, as his name says. RM, why? RM Watch Trading LLC. I like that. Yeah, yeah. This is one of the biggest barbers you, oh, you're gonna see. Oh, fuck me. All, 40th, uh, all 50th anniversary. Shit. I just had a conversation about this stuff. Wow. They say there's a shortage. Give me stuff that you have relatively cheap that's sellable and you have multiples of. Do you see those selling under 200? This is no. all brand new 03s. No. You don't see the sell out of 200? Titanium or steels? Steels. Yeah, no. I'm not uh, going to take that. I had them. They, they're not moving. Not moving. Do I can, see? listen, I, you have multiples. I can take, put, post, whatever. You want to post? Okay. Or you, right. okay. So at my buddy Romans, right, we obviously discuss what every single dealer is discussing now, and that is the market shifting in certain popular pieces. And Roman has a lot of those popular pieces that was always a specialty. When the market is down on popular things, you take your losses to take into consideration that you were getting nothing but wins in the last two years, and you move on. So what me and Roman were discussing is to see what inventory has, what we can help him move 
because we have a retail operation, he's strictly wholesale, and uh, basically put together a package of watches that he has doubles or triples of, or things that he needs help moving, or things that we know we can move, and this is uh, sort of one shoulder rubbing another. See, so that, that, I don't think the price is that relevant, because it's, it's, rare. it's what rare. rare. What do you want me to make uh, that, uh, when, when Misha is going to be here? Here's the Whatever. thing, but as you, hold on a second, don't you? The amount of money we're talking about it, I'd rather take it Malka. to the Malka window. I'll, I'll schedule the Malka and ske bring it to our office. I don't take chances. I'd rather pay a couple of grand to ship the okay, You know what I mean? Like I don't, I don't, because if we're talking about up to 500,000, he can take. No, but this I is a lot more. Gonna yeah, it's going to be a lot more. How much is this? Just for example. Uh, 165. Is, is it complete? This is yes, the one. We'll see, that's watches. movable at 165. Okay. This one we don't have, right? I have so many concepts. Do, do we have this one? This one? is the titanium. Yeah. And I sent you one box at the time. You tell you tell us how, how long well, the memo needs to be. Here's the thing: is they're things. they're in Philly, so anything you need back instantaneously, it's by you with my driver. You okay. understand? So if you have multiples, they can sit in my vault just the same. What I also do, if it's a significant amount, I'll put you as a rider on my insurance. Meaning that if you keep in two million with me, you get a rider on my insurance for two million. If something happens, you get paid out. No reason for you have multiples of these. Whether higher, I mean, okay, how much you want for that? It's better. What do you want? Three fifty you own it for? for three hundred. Okay. This one for one ninety. This one for two fifty. Two fifty. Okay. Yeah. So this one you, you know, not this really much cheap. I can do. How much? Like a lot of those things I got cheap. I own it for a hundred, hundred. Okay. So memo. Like yeah. Those ones I own a few of them cheap. I so that's what I'm saying. So memo where you have multiples of. They're easy two hundred thousand. I had a I had a titanium one. I couldn't get two. I couldn't get two twenty five out of it. Couldn't stop by New York City without seeing my buddy Max at Trax. Called Max and I said, listen, I want to pick up about 100 grand worth of gold. I put away gold on a regular basis. And once in a blue moon, I'll pick up 100 grand worth, put it in the back of the safe and sort of forget about it. Everything is good. Everything yeah, is I can't good. complain. So we're going to review, you know, what you, what you picked up and uh, what's going on. Let's go. One, ounce, two, three, four, five, three, five. One, two, three, four, five here. All right, so now we have uh, 20 ounces here, right? If my math is correct. I've lost uh, the ability to count all the weed I smoke. All right, we have 25 ounces, 30 ounces, 32 ounces here. He lost me already. <laughs> 50. So we got 50 ounces. More. Well, more, obviously, 52, right? 53. And 53, right? So yeah. that's the total, 53 ounces. You got 1924. It was less. It was actually a little less when I bought it. All right. It was, um, it was right under 1900. Was what I. 1900. Was that with the with the, the premium or with without? the premium? I think it was with like 1890 an ounce. It came okay. out. Okay. Right. So I so, mean, uh, we'll we'll check with uh, whatever it is. I mean, you know, it's uh, if there's a uh, something that's awry, we'll handle it. If you were to recommend for somebody to pick up a hundred grand worth of gold, what would be the number one reason? It's undervalued at this point in time. My deep suspicion, and this is a borderline of conspiracy theory, but. I believe that there's way more paper gold out there or gold certificates than there is actual physical gold. I think they've played a game. To be honest, man, I don't really know the real reality of what's actually going on because people are fearing the recession. I'm hearing watch prices crashed a little bit, right? Uh, on certain popular models, very much like the Dow right now. You right. have all these popular stocks that people, the easy stuff, the easy right. pickings, like, oh, I'm gonna buy Amazon, it keeps going. What about I'm Richard gonna... Mills? Still up? Steady. Wow did not drop at all. It's a matter of time until the US currency collapses and there's gonna be some shift in a global wor world order of, of trading because you can't keep playing the game. They're stealing labor, they're overprinting vast amounts of capital. This particular economy is running on fumes, it's running on bullshit capital companies. People don't really wanna work, as I've come to understand, you know what I'm saying? All these capital companies, all this Wall Street shit, all these investment firms, all this paper pushing, money pushing contracts. Meanwhile, China is, you know, playing a different game and, and that's gotta come to a head. You've got a major nation that's basically providing slave labor for cheap American consumer goods while we do the basics around here. Nobody wants to work, mass shootings everywhere. I personally feel like this country has been infiltrated by China woke theories you don't know where the f they're coming from they're destroying this country and the epstein and this they're all compromised and they're sitting here destroying this country from within back in the day that five or that ten would at least get you a slice of pizza a soda and a train ride home now you got to decide whether you want to drink a ride home or a slice of pizza that's not a good decision that's why people are doing what they're doing man well that escalated quickly look my friend max one thing about him is that he may come off a little bit crazy, a little bit eccentric, 
but he's a good guy and he tells it like it is. This is how he feels about the situation. I'm sure a lot of you guys share his opinion as well. Maybe a little conspiracy theory sounds like, but I gotta be honest with you, in the last couple of years, all those conspiracy theories that you heard in the last two years kept been kind of coming true. So, uh, but anyway, it was always a good time with Max, it's always good to talk to him. Max, thank you so much for hooking me up with the gold. And it was time to head home. Made some trades, bought a watch. No, I bought two, I bought two more watches, possibly three. Possibly three. Hopefully sold the three and a half million dollar watch. Bought some gold. I got a hundred grand worth oh. of gold. Fantastic Mila Nobu, as always. Yes, fantastic Mila Nobu. Where, Shout where out Nobu. We take our jobs here extremely serious. <laughs> All right, we are here with the one, the only, Eli, this guy's our main guy, our shipping legend over here. Say a couple words. Yes. What's up, guys? Hello, YouTube. Hey, I'm everybody. famous. <laughs> take, the, take the cap off, show the Dr. Evil. Dr. Evil. <laughs> yeah, like that. One million dollars. Ilya shall be number two. I think it's a fun time down here, I'll be honest. I think it's really fun. We got Shell in the back. Tell everybody what you do at Luxury Bazaar. Uh, I'm responsible for a rare inventory. Or do you like what you do? Uh, I have to do it. It's very important to have everything in order to satisfy our customers, first of all, and yes. foremost. Yes, I love that. That's Shell for you guys. Give her a big round of applause. Do, 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 do. And now we are going... Oh my god, whoa. <laughs> So you never know what's going on at Luxury Bazaar. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're not using any of this footage. Sold a Grubel Force Double Turbion, a Titanium Turbion, AP. I sold a Royal Low Chronograph with a blue dial stainless steel, an Offshore Bumblebee, an Offshore Volcano, and two James Cameron's Rolexes. So far, sold a H Moser Center Seconds Red Dow, pretty cool Dow through trade. He traded a Tudor plus cash, sold a Rootbeard GMT and a White Sky Dweller to the same customer up in Canada. You know who you are, shout out. He's also interested in a Omega Snoopy. Also sold a 39 millimeter AP Skeleton this week. So been a pretty busy week so far. All right, so I sold this week a Rolex Comex Submariner 16610. I also sold a Panerai to my boy Faraz. Shout out to you. Sam picked up an Explorer. That was his first Rolex, so shout out to Sam. We also sold a Date with the Spanish dial. I also sold a Cartier Love Bracelet and a Certi Dial Gold Sub. And then I've also bought this uh, Yachtmaster very clean 40 millimeter great value and where's it at boom and then we also picked up this uh blue z this is just today deals that did not go through to this week include a black panther which uh a wire deposit was supposed to be coming for that the customer had a very close friend who had one and he could not pass up on that and then a 5980r also did not go through some l's some W's, but overall a good week. What we got in the case today? Uh, watches. Oh, sh Not so much the blue dial, but the 5500 V's are probably one of my favorite, just favorite chronographs. It looks really good. Um, I think the, the 5500 V in general is vastly underrated. What's on your wrist today, Kyle? Oh wait, nothing. You have a hair tie on your wrist. The whole MNF collection. Not the whole, obviously, but. Out of the ones we have, which one's your favorite? Obviously, it would have to be the Perpetual. Zoom down there. Sick watch, great for daily wear. They actually just came out with uh, one called the Evo, and it's on like a rubber strap. It has a, uh, it's much easier to wear than something like this, which is on a leather strap, however. This is still pretty good to wear. I have a client who wears one every single day. To me, this is like the Pagani Huayra of the, the watch world. You know what I'm saying? Like this is, about as good as it gets in terms of design. Shout out to Max Buser. Buy one, keep one, trade one. Buy one, keep one, sell one. So buy one, keep one, sell one? Yes. When you ever one. Dude, that's tough. That's so tough. First of all, MBNF is in here. That automatically makes it super tough. So keep all the MBNFs. Here's the thing is that I'm not gonna do the keep one, sell one, break one, whatever you wanna do, call it. I'm gonna tell you 
that this box is actually full of keepers. Every single MBNF in here is a keeper. They're done. Uh, there have been uh, discontinued limited editions. Uh, and I can't even pick one out of the MBNFs because I like them all. Uh, never met an MBNF I didn't like. Uh, there's also the Pam, coveted Pam 203 in here, which is probably the most collectible Panerai out there, the one with the Angulus movement. There's also Paddock 5070 in here, the Chrono with the famed Lemania movement, so you want to keep that. Can you give us your thoughts again on the, the frog? I mean, it's like it's like everything I say about MBNF. It's it's he's way ahead of his time. He's the Elon Musk of uh, the watch world, as far as I'm concerned. But Max, it's like I can't wait to see the next thing. Because every single thing he comes out with is just ridiculous from a horological perspective, from a design perspective. It's completely different. I mean, did you see the new uh, double chrono that he came out with just now? I think it's insane. You look at his Instagram, it's insane. It literally has two chronographs. Like, not a, a, like a split chronograph, but actually two chronographs. And the horology behind it is absolutely insane. So I can go into a ton of details on every one of these, but every one of them is unique oh, wow. and different in its own way. It's innovative in its own way. So, yeah, keep every single MBNF. God, I don't know where to start. At the last minute, we're packing for the show. 500 pieces of jewelry showed up, which I need to sit down and price it. I don't even know when I'm going to do this stuff, but it will be done. Chelsea and uh, Nina will come and hopefully help us to do the show because I'm expecting it to be a really busy show. I'm going to teach Nina. She wants to learn jewelry, so I'm going to teach her. She's willing to learn. She's going to be standing right next to me. Really, really excited that Gary decided to take a chance on little old social media me and teach me the ropes about jewelry. Ever since I started working here, I really wanted to work with it and learn more. He said, let's go. I said, let's go to Vegas and we're going. Speaking of jewelry, I actually had this guy, Sam, come into the office. He came in with a bunch of his jewelry and I'm actually wearing one of his bracelets right now. Shout out Sam and Itel Gem Steel. But anyway, we talk about men's jewelry and all the things that he is doing in that realm. So pretty cool stuff. Go Sam. Hi, my name is Sam. I'm, from, I'm the owner of Itel Gem Steel in Montreal and we provide beautiful stainless steel jewelry for men. So you were saying about like how you guys started? Yeah, so I used to be in the gold and jewelry business okay. and the market started changing and the men's jewelry market was very weak mm -hmm. and I started seeing there was gonna be a massive growth in men's jewelry. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to do something that was different. So I created a men's line called Italian Steel, yeah. fine quality stainless steel jewelry from Italy. Mm -hmm. And uh, slowly by slowly, we started getting into the mat good retailers within America, mm -hmm. uh, brands, uh, retailers that carry brands like Rolex and AP and even Patek. Right now we're in over about 700 retailers around the world. That's awesome. Yeah, I design everything. Now we source it from everywhere around the world. Uh, we still make a lot of items in Italy, mm -hmm. items that the higher end product line with 18 karat yellow gold accents. Yeah. And then we also sell to more of the middle range retailers, like a lot of the hip hop stuff, the Cuban lean chains. Mm -hmm. Those are like everyday essentials. Yeah. I feel as though unless <laughs> men's jewelry was like specifically talked about, then a lot of the time men kind of like discount themselves, unless it's a watch, like obviously yeah. they're like, yeah, like whatever. But I've found that like, like I posted a reel of Kyle with like a bunch of rings on or whatever. Mm -hmm. And the response was really good. And I feel like it's really cool that you kind of like took that by storm and you were like, yeah, like let's capitalize on men's jewelry. Like it's a little bit weak right now. Let yeah. me just make it stronger. Lots of goodies, lots of new designs. So this is our bond collection. This is made in Italy, stainless steel, 18 karat gold accents. So this is wow. more of our higher that. end stainless steel jewelry collection. You could pair it up with some nice watches. This is a part of our Rebel collection, double-sided skull with a toggle clasp. This is awesome. Roman. It's shiny. It's a lot of shiny. It's a lot of shiny. How are you? Good, you, I'm a huge fan. Thank you, thank you. you I watch every show. What's your name? Sam, from Sam. Montreal. Montreal, nice to meet you. You we too. We have a guy here from Montreal. I know, Marco. Yeah. I watch the episodes. Where's Marco? I met him. So, so what do you do? So we design men's jewelry. We dabble a little bit in ladies. It's fine quality stainless steel jewelry. 
And basically, we sell to about 700 retailers around the world. Fine wow. jewelers that carry, some, some stores carry Rolex, APs, Paddocks. Uh, so a lot of men's men buy nice watches, but they don't want to spend a fortune on jewelry. So we basically created a niche market for fine quality, cool accessories for men. So you have a Rolex bracelet? An AP. Wow. So we do classic designs, and then we do some more modern style designs. I think it feels better than a Royal Oak bracelet. It's like a blanket. It's like, yeah. Oh, yeah, look, it's got adjustable links too. Yeah. yeah. You can make it smaller. I would need to. <laughs> look at that. <laughs> how much is something like, how much are something Re like? Look, what are the retails on this yeah, stuff? Retails for retail? these ones, one ninety nine. It's not bad. <laughs> Well, guys, I hope Nina and Chelsea have a great time in Vegas. Uh, you guys will see it on the next episode. Meanwhile, hit the like button, subscribe button, notification button, whatever buttons you hit to help our channel grow. I appreciate you guys tuning in, and we'll see you next week on Gray Market.